So this came up on my feed the other day over on Reddit, and I'm going to put the link in the description if you guys want to go weigh in on the discussion that's happening over there. Uh, but I thought this was actually very important to bring uh, to you here over at work to game uh, as a discussion, especially as it relates to content creation, the ultimate race. What do we want as the Final Fantasy 14 community continues to grow and where do we see the community going? Uh, but ultimately, this post is asking and also uh you know really kind of being very telling uh, in terms of how people are feeling about the current ultimate race and maybe some expectations that didn't align up uh, but also some realities that exist within that this is not an attack on the poster uh, this is just me kind of giving my response and highlighting some of y'all's uh, comments that have already weighed in on this topic uh, namely because i think there's a couple really key interesting points uh, feel free to share your own feel free to just go over there and read and, and get caught up to speed you don't need to watch this video whatsoever uh, but hello everyone and welcome uh, my name is brian and this is the work to game channel where we discuss Final Fantasy 14 primarily, uh, sometimes occasionally other MMORPGs. I'll give you guys an update on Chris's status uh, towards the end of the video if you're not following us over on Twitter. He's been posting tweets about what is going on currently in his life, and uh, I'll give an update here at the end of this video for those of you who are generally curious. So first and foremost, it says the community lacks competent content creators and organizers. I'm very disappointed that there is not a stream keeping track of the world first race for Dragon Song's reprise. The Mog Talk website hasn't even been updated. And I believe uh, Frosty just had a kid. Um, somebody can correct me whether I'm right or wrong on that. Um, I, the last couple of years kind of feel like a blur, but um, I believe I congratulated him on that regards. Note to self, life finds a way. We're going to talk more about that in a second. The stream yesterday was six hours long and had insufferable WoW player uh, on the panel that kept cutting people off, switching to other streams mid pull and complaining about how he couldn't get past ARR. Uh, there are plenty of creators that have an audience who could do uh, this and aren't competing in the race. And I wonder what's the reason behind not having some sort of coverage on this. And that is the premise. And we're going to dive into the comments. And first and foremost, I think this comment actually speaks the loudest there's no money in watching the race for world second now before we dive into kind of the other things especially that go on behind the scenes and content creation within the final fantasy 14 community obviously this is my opinion and my perspective uh, the goal is to obviously get y'alls and have a discussion um that is ultimately the goal sometimes that's successful sometimes they're not one way or the other you're gonna let me know um <laughs> you'll, you'll let me know i'm sure i'll hear of it no money in watching the race for world second. Chris and I actually recently went to dinner as we were discussing all the things that kind of been impacting his world. And uh, we sat down and it was like the concept that generally the speaking that the people who win the world first race don't do it live. And we're both positive and negative on that mindset. Like I can see both sides of the argument, but what sometimes literate here points out and highlights in it is that what is being broadcast really isn't the world first race. It's the world second race. Those who are actually streaming it where others aren't. Let me know. Like, do you guys feel that that's a good thing? It's a bad thing. Like, obviously, by not streaming it, they're not sharing their strategies, which gives them a competitive edge, which ultimately from the premise that if we want world uh, you know, like first streaming coverage, if they want to get sponsorships, which is going to tie all back to the original uh, poster's opinion here, um, then you kind of have to have everybody on the same page. Like the fact that they don't stream it and then yes, people probably would try to snipe some things, but they're already sniping from each other most likely as people are progressing as a part of this whole system. And so they're the only ones who are opting out and winning, but is the goal to have a true world first race with sponsorships or not. There's no right or wrong answer, like legitimately asking you guys what your opinion is as somebody who hasn't really tuned into the world first race, uh, namely because of what sometimes Litter just said, it's really kind of a race for world second. Why, why are we even racing uh, in this regards? Yeah, it, it has for me lost its appeal. Not that it isn't interesting. And let's actually dive into the numbers and show you guys what's currently performing within the space. So if we look at the detailed analysis here, you can see that we did get a spike, uh, especially in terms of peak for the period, uh, especially as it goes in. But now we're all of a sudden starting to see that dip down as fatigue, and especially viewership comes in. Now, Chris told me that he thinks that a part of that is that it is one 
boss, apparently not in the case of the new ultimate, but meaning that it's like you're kind of in one fight. You're not progressing from, you know, fight to fight to fight to vista to vista to vista. So there's not this kind of visual representation that you would see in a typical, uh, you know, raid of, you know, let's say Destiny, for example, where you are moving uh, from place to place to place. So there is also that visual sense of movement. Um, but whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, that really is kind of going to be personal choice in that regards. But you can see here clearly the, the numbers are already starting to drop now, though, like to still speak to it. The numbers in and of itself, 2% of all Twitch right now watching Final Fantasy 14. I think that's pretty significant. If we look at from the time of the last race, uh, we can start to obviously you see the, the dips, especially as it relates to like the gamers who finally finish Endwalker and dip until the 0.5 expansion. So there is a couple of moving factors as a part of the 14 community. So let's jump back over into the Reddit thread and talk about some of the comments. So first, Sir Van L writes, Square wants to separate itself from supporting the high-end rating scene because their endorsements will reflect back onto the community and end up incentivizing players to start comparing each other to high-end raiders, despite them not having the time investment, team comp, knowledge, etc. to actually make the comparison at all. I understand that it sucks, but it's up to the content creators to cover this because SE probably never gonna touch it. I can't really speak to like Square Enix's kind of point of view. Uh, I feel like they do uh, support the community as a whole, but the community isn't just the raid scene. When I, I actually physically responded, physically, I wrote uh, a, a response to this talking about my perspective as a content creator, and I don't feel like I'm the authority to cover the ultimate race. I don't do ultimate raids. I don't necessarily find that as my pinnacle activity within Final Fantasy XIV. My pinnacle activity would be the PvP mode. Like that, that's Brian's pinnacle everybody within the community is going to have their own people throw glamour is the true end game at me all the time or some people say the story is the true end game if we look at the numbers alone especially in the kind of the history and how final fantasy 14 uh the expansions play out uh generally speaking people play the expansion and then they dip and then they come back in a 0.5 right before the next expansion get caught up on the story play the expansion and dip so I think the vast majority of the community is playing Final Fantasy XIV almost like a single player game, even though that doesn't still represent the whole slice of the pie. So then it comes down to does Square Enix want to separate its the high end rating community feeling like their endorsement of that would then put added pressure on it. Maybe there would be, maybe there'd be some obviously players that would have that psychological draw and pull. Um, but ultimately, I, th I think that's kind of a reach personally speaking but there's a couple other comments let's get to. So our original poster follows up, says this is the answer I was looking for in terms of vinyl saying, at the end of the day, you're right, the game caters most to the casual audience. Maybe with rating being so popular in the Japanese scene that we'll see some sort of change within the next expansion, especially since IRC, they said that they won't require you to progress through the entire story as a new player, possibly open up the avenue for raiders to get into the game quicker. Uh, this is something where like, I don't necessarily know if this is like a wow cultural thing, but you guys can let me know. Um, but yes, there is a culture that is like raid is the be all end all. Like I was talking about earlier. Um, I think wow catered to the casual audience. That's why wow became wow. Like the cash, the, the MMO audience was all about this persistent online world in which that it was like living a second life. Now you'll hear people like, oh, you don't want to have a job in your game on uh, that kind of mindset. And what MMOs used to be is that virtual world. And then there was a game, you know, that existed, you know, inside of that world. But then they've shifted to where WoW made it more accessible, more casual, and the WoW continued to make it more and more and more casual. But the raid scene ended up kind of taking the, the cake. That actually then incentivized people, and that's why we see from a cultural perspective within MMOs, people rushing to the end game, rushing to the raid, because that is the activity. That is the community that you need to be a part of. And I think that WoW has actually suffered with that kind of mentality. And I think if, as long as 14 ends up being able to uh, you know, speak to multiple people, multiple types, multiple people who are looking MMO style for different kinds of content, they're going to actually be better in the long run because you don't end up finding yourself top heavy. Now, story-wise, that is going to be an issue and that will be something we'll see if they let people have a different on-ramp into it. I think New Game Plus being bundled with like a jump potion could be the solution. Not that that's, I think, the right solution, um, but you know, I'm not the, I'm not the lead developer on the game, but anyway, let's jump into a couple more comments and then I'd love to, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think. So Alta actually follows this up talking about 
Square Enix's rating uh, community, saying they do acknowledge the rating as popular in mainstream activity. If Yoshi P's numbers are correct, he suggests that over 50% of the players have actually tried Savage, 30% have finished a tier. Even if that's only 10% or 5% of the population that has tried to clear within a Savage cycle, and his numbers are way over exaggerated since those clears might come later when savages were old savage tiers and then that's still pretty big population considering how big the game is not to mention that rating is popular in japan it's just that chasing the world's first is a very hardcore rating like a one to three day savage rating way before guides are even out was never really the thing for a lot of people and there's a clear difference between just raiding and seeking to clear something and then to do everything blind on day one or two when there isn't an obvious way moving forward and i'm going to pair that exactly with these two comments i wonder why the reason behind having not some sort of coverage for this money problem is that unless esport orgs decide that they want to throw away money for a few years and try to grow the scene because the fat chance square Enix is going to do anything about it i can't imagine catering to high-end scenes this is where it comes down to like content creation and content creators um whether you feel uh like i mean this is this gets into some like i've seen a lot of different opinions on this subject so i'm going to try to keep it um you know pretty straightforward and direct in this regard so you don't have to agree with me again um but let's say somebody who's putting investing their time like should they also then have to invest their money frosty like i work a full-time job like you know oh let me take off work and cover this event um, yes, there's a passion behind it, but how many days are we talking about at some point? Like I don't get PTO for taking off now, not that I'm the right person to cover the world's first race in my opinion. Um, but that's a lot of it. Like content creators, like in terms of like, when you go look at the numbers, um, heck, like even like Zeppla and happy, like they would be considered like probably the highest paid within the 14 community. I'm sure there are some others that I'm not naming that are doing that well or better, but it isn't essentially this like, you know, like, oh, you, you're set for life uh, mindset. And to take time off of that, there has, I, there has to be some form of compensation. Otherwise, you're just not going to get that buy-in and that investment. And, you know, I get the argument from content creation that it should be about fun. I actually completely agree with that. I think that's where it starts. But to say and especially like if you've got a family if you got people who rely on you that you should uh, like you know sacrifice like their financial stability to cover an event that you want to cover it gets into a little bit of a challenging area and namely and this kind of falls all the way back outside of content creators and how i kind of view this and again i think this might be the hottest spicy take of the video who knows is that if people don't show up to watch then there's just there's nothing you can do and so you end up then catering and this is my biggest gripe about content creation is that you end up catering to what the algorithm wants and that can be frustrating for the viewers experience too so there is this kind of relationship that if the viewers are better educated on how content creators survive without having to like open your wallets um there that that helps right that that could actually go a long way but you need a larger volume of, of, of people we and I covered over on yesterday on ginger prime legitimately like some of the big changes that they're talking about having on Twitch and and YouTube's making some big changes that are coming here in the next two weeks we don't know exactly what but we have an idea you know so there there are ways that can kind of go around it but when it comes to that it's like you know getting just a thousand uh views or, uh, you know even a thousand viewers on a live stream can help and it can bring in sponsorships but they need that consistently and when we look at the numbers especially with the history of twitch when we look at these numbers alone right now the final fantasy 14 community uh is not large enough to sustain and survive through these dips and so that's where like the the like the twitch subs and the primes and like memberships and like that's where that helps make up for those gaps but you can't survive in this business on hype alone maybe you can if you're single and you live in montana um but i know like <laughs> some people and some of the uh, the the costs that are associated with living in places that get you access i'm not going to name names but i, I they, like it's like three or four times what my mortgage is here in texas and i'm just like I don't know how you do that. Like that stresses me out. That makes me go and hit the sub button and follow and, and try to, you know, give some kind of passive support just so that that content can continue because I like, and I, I enjoy it. Right. So there is kind of that relationship between the viewer, the creator, and the question of is that what is um, ult the ultimate race and how does it grow from here and there? Now I've uh, hopefully haven't wasted any of your time. Hopefully you've got something interesting out of this video. I'm generally curious as to your thoughts. 
So thank you so much for being here. Um, as the, uh, like I said, an update on Chris, uh, he, t he tweeted out, uh, so far his mother-in-law is not actually doing that great. Um, and uh, so if you could keep her in her thoughts and her in your prayers um, as she continues to kind of fight uh, through, uh, she had to have a uh, brain surgery uh, for a tumor. And, uh, and so he's going down to spend time with the family and hopefully uh, everything can kind of work out. She's where she needs to be at the hospital. And, uh, and that's the status. And so Chris is uh, not streaming um, and that's obviously going to impact him. Uh, and so he's, uh, you know, so just keep Chris in your thoughts and your prayers as well, especially throughout this time. And uh, thanks so much for watching this video. It's going to, it's going to help him out in, uh, indirectly in a way. And, um, and if you guys like this video and you like this format, maybe we'll bring more of these discussions, uh, like this, not just like with me and Chris, but like, you know, like where it's me or Chris, uh, kind of talk to you about what's going on within, um, the game, the community and the world. So anyway, uh, if you guys haven't seen housing got delayed again, sorry for the bad news. I posted over then on my final fantasy 14, uh, channel ginger JRPG. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I post it in the community tab. You check it out if you wish. Uh, thank you so much guys. And, uh, thanks for being here. Hopefully you have a wonderful, fantastic day. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video, but until then take care.